Hello and welcome to this major update where there is a lot to cover. Starting out, there has been some fighting and territorial changes across the front line. The Russians have launched one of their biggest missile strikes throughout this war. Heavy fighting continues over Kishivka. Ukraine's main push has started. And then we take a look at how the whole situation adds up together. So starting out, let's get started with the territorial changes and where the fighting is happening, starting out in the Zaporizhia front. So starting out, we have some reports from the fighting by Robotine. And here we uh, hear from the different sources that the Ukrainian forces have actually started their main push in this direction. And their goal is the uh, Tokmak area. So according to two Pentagon officials that are anonymous and according to the New York Times, which reported on this, the Ukrainians have started their main push and this goes through Robotina. So the first stages of their initial push, which I'll be explaining further later, is that they sent over a hundred armored vehicles and they sent three uh, battalions in strength of infantry and heavy fighting ensued in this area to the northeast of Robotine. And this is how we see that the Ukrainian forces managed to capture this territory here. And the green zone has significantly increased from around, uh, which was around this area, to this uh, major area right now. So a significant change in the gray zone and uh, some uh, minor advances in territory. And this is the initial push of their main push. The Pentagon officials claim it would take one to three weeks, if successful, for the Ukrainians to reach and capture Tokmak. So this is very interesting that they claim with this time frame. Well, let's get back into that later. For this first fighting, according to uh, my sources, the Ukrainian forces continued uh, assaulting the Russian positions uh, with their different uh, forces. They included the 116th and 118th Ombre, the 47th Battalion Tactical Group Ombre, two tank companies were involved, uh, which, which included over 80 armored vehicles, which was later increased to 100. Of this, uh, they started uh, moving with at 4 a.m. where they started their offensive. Then the first wave uh, reached the front line and uh, fight it, fought with the the Russian positions at 10 a.m. and then the second wave at 2 p.m. and this was all Ukraine local time. Of this fighting, the Russian forces, which were the fighting the Ukrainian forces, were the 810th Marine Brigade and the 71st Regiment and the 177th Marine Regiment. So two regiments and a brigade, which is approximately 6,000 people, and this is just units of those brigades. So essentially the Ukrainian forces and Russian forces are gathering their forces in this area so that they are essentially having an all-out battle uh, here by Robotine and the Ukrainian forces are trying to break through while the Russian forces are trying to prevent them from taking the village and pushing further on which would uh, essentially uh, by time reach the first line of defense which we see here uh, south of Robotine. If the Ukrainian forces are able to break through the first line of defense the next fight would be around Tokmak. Then move on to the Ranevsky Lech area here in the borderline between Donetsk and Saporizhia. And here we hear that the latest uh, attacks also happened from Ukrainian forces towards Sarmayorske and Uroshaina. So the Ukrainian forces are using their main push towards Sarmayorske. As for Uroshaina, it is mainly small reconnaissance and assault groups that uh, are attacking it under heavy artillery support. But they, there isn't any main push in this area. As for the Staromayovsky area, it is reported that the 35th Marine Brigade uh, is attacking the uh, Staromayovsky area from Makarivka, which indicates that they are doing a head-on push straight from Makarivka towards Staromayovsky, as well as from the northwestern part from Rifnopil towards Staromayovsky. And the Ukrainian forces have managed to regain the initial foothold they had earlier of Sarmayoske and fighting is now within the village as well as heavy artillery and tank support on the Ukrainian side while the Russian forces are also responding with heavy artillery support and uh, some tank reinforcements coming in to uh, fight up the Ukrainian forces 
So heavy fighting is also happening by Saramayorsky, while the Ukrainian main push is happening by Robotina. Following this is massive fighting by the Klishivka area. So over the past few weeks, there's been a lot of fighting by Klishivka. According to the latest report from Remy Lind, the Ukrainian forces have been fully pushed out of Klishivka. So essentially what happened was that the Ukrainians had some initial success. They have managed to enter and get a foothold in Klishivka, as we see by the recap. And they had essentially gotten a foothold in the southwestern parts next to these uh, heavy forest lines. And since then, uh, heavy fighting had ensued within the city. Uh, both Ukrainian and Russian sources claim that fighting is happening for every building and every meter. Then, uh, according to uh, Russian reports, the Russians received uh, reinforcements in this part of the front line. And then they, with their reinforcements, managed to push the Ukrainians out of the village. And since then, Ukraine has received their own reinforcements. So heavy fighting continues in this area and it's massive artillery duel ongoing on both sides. The Ukrainians are massively using cluster munitions in this part of the front line. So generally, there's a lot of fighting happening here, uh, which uh, makes the front very volatile. Now, uh, moving on to the next point, which is the Russian offensive here in the northern parts by Luhansk. The Russian forces are here continuously fighting, and according to the latest reports, they seem to be fighting in the direction of the defenses of Cheneshina, which is here. So essentially, the Russian forces are somehow reaching this area, either through the south, the north, or uh, going through Tverulihove, taking control of it, and then pushing westwards. So one of these three options, I'm not sure which it is, as there's been no report of this village being fully captured yet although there has been reports of them retreating out of it. So it could be some forward defensive positions of the Ukrainian forces located at the hills here to the next to the village, which the Russian forces are fighting up against. And then they claim that it is the defenses of Cheneshina. I'm not exactly sure, but there seems to be fighting here in the central area and also in the northern and southern areas where they are trying to gain a proper foothold fortify their position so that they can transfer troops across the river line and push further westwards in the future. The next point in this video is the main thrust of Ukraine's offensive. So essentially there is this New York Times article about how the US says main thrust of Ukraine's counteroffensive has begun. And I've read through it and taken some main points with some quotes from the article as it is behind a paywall. I cannot show it here. But essentially, the main point is, first off, the uh, article claims that two anonymous U.S. Pentagon officials claim that the main thrust has begun. And I quote, the main thrust of Ukraine's nearly two-month-old counteroffensive is now underway in the country's southeast. Two Pentagon officials sat on Wednesday with thousands of reinforcements purring into the grinding battle, many of them trained and equipped by the West and until now held in reserve. So the main thrust that we have been waiting for that Zelensky has said, once it happens, we'll see its effects. This is, it has now begun. It is now at the end of July. We are nearing the end of summer and the Ukrainians have so far been unable to reach the Russians' first line of defense. So now they are putting everything on the table. They're trying to use everything they have to gain some sort of result because according to this article, uh, moving further on, let's get back to this point. So the second point is that uh, the latest uh, assault against Robotina, which we saw yesterday that I reported on in this video, was an assault with 100 vehicles. And essentially, this fight uh, was essentially stopped. And they included German-made Leopards, American-made Bradley infantry fighting vehicles, so there was a lot of these things, yet they still uh, failed, which uh, officials in the United States, according to this article, are not very satisfied with, considering they had everything they needed except for the F-16 fighter jets, yet they're still unable to make any successful pushes through Russia's defensive lines. The point is that the Russia's uh, strongest points are essentially that the Ukrainian troops along the southern front sat in interviews on Wednesday that they were steadily pushing Russian troops back, but their progress had been incremental with no major breakthroughs. And that is because they've been majorly slowed down by minefields, 
Some said the biggest obstacles were Russia's withering artillery fire and airstrikes. So essentially these three points are Russia's strongest points. Minefields, artillery fire and airstrikes, which I have been talking about throughout this too long offensive. The Ukrainians have constantly been complaining about this. They've been unable to see success because of this. It is that the Russians have laid out minefields. So the Ukrainians, they got to try to go through it. They try to clear it. Then the Russians launch airstrikes and uh, artillery strikes on these positions and prevents their mine clearing equipment from clearing the mines. And then the rest of the equipment either have to retreat or go through a minefield. The fourth point of this article is talking about Ukraine's goal with this offensive and they claim that the goal is Tokmak, which we see right here. It is a level 2 important city according to my analysis. There's level 3 and level 4. The Ukrainian forces want to reach Tokmak. By capturing Tokmak, the Ukrainian forces would be able to break through the first two lines of Russia's defenses and they'll have a major interjection between the east and the west. This would essentially significantly decrease the amount of supplies going from the east to the west as they would have one road instead of two roads and there's also multiple directions they can go through Tokmak. So essentially it is close to the front line, it can be separated into these three points of the front line. It has a lot of uses and it is a central position. So the Ukrainian forces are definitely looking to take control over this village as it is the most important one. And without it, the only connection. <laughs> and without it, the only road connection between your Russian east and western side of Separation Front is from the Berzhiansk area to Melitopol. So they would significantly decrease the amount of supplies going through the, between the two sides. U.S. officials expect this main thrust, this phase of the offensive, to take one to three weeks. The new operation, if successful, could take one to three weeks. Ukrainian officials have told officials in Washington. So essentially the Ukrainians are claiming this will take one to three weeks. And if we look at the date, today is the 27th of July, there's essentially two to three weeks left of a good summer weather. After this, the Russian forces and the Ukrainian forces will have a difficulty continuing any sort of offensive due to the increase of rainfall. There's been a lot of rain in this month compared to prior two months. And generally the situation seems to uh, geographically to go to the worse and worse as time goes by. So the faster they see success, the better. I think the reason the Ukrainians kept delaying it was because they were hoping for some sort of breakthrough. But since nothing has happened, they are forced to do it now. Otherwise, they would not have enough time to actually launch their main thrust. Final point is that the Ukrainians chose this time due to the Russians firing Major General Ivan Popov. First, Ukrainian forces have been making plotting, but steady progress clearing a path through the dense Russian minefields, which is what we have seen here to the north of Robotina and other fortifications. Second, they sensed the opportunity with the sacking of regional Russian commander Major General Ivan Popov to exploit turmoil in the local Russian leadership. So essentially, they say that the Russian Major General, which was recently fired, due to allegedly him complaining about the situation and all of these things. Uh, they said because of that, the Russian army would have some turmoil in the front line, would be unable to respond as accurately and as efficiently as they would have a week ago. So this is the time to strike according to the Ukrainian officials. And that's, that is why we're seeing the strike right now. Uh, in addition to uh, what I think, which is that the weather will continue going down from here. It won't get any better. So they are essentially on their last days. And now for the final part of this video, the missile strikes that have hit across Ukraine. So the Russians yesterday started launching a massive missile barrage. And I say massive because this could potentially be the largest from the first day of the war until today. So essentially what happened is that the Russian forces during the day, in the middle of the day, launched a massive missile strike. The areas they hit include Sumy region, Dnipro region, Kropovinitsky region, Shotomir region, Kiev, Venetia, Khmelnytsky, Chernobyl and Lviv. So the, all of these areas were hit. And most importantly, it seems that their main targets were anywhere from command posts 
scattering of troops and airfields. So three specific airfields have been hit, Krupovinitsky, Syotomir and Khrubinitsky regions. So starting out, we have the Krupovinitsky airport, which is to the city of Krupovinitsky in the region of Krupovinitsky. So essentially, uh, this is the first one. Then we have uh, missile strikes at the airport here by Sadokostantinov. So this is the second one. And then we have a third one here by the Shortomir region, which is at the Oserne airport. So these three airports were hit by missile strikes. And allegedly, these three airports are the airports that were launching the Ukrainian planes that then launched the Storm Shadow missiles. So essentially, the Russians hit the airfields that carry the planes and the ammunition uh, used for the Ukrainian Air Force to launch uh, Storm Shadow missiles. And this is in combination with all of these other missile strikes. They all added up to somewhere around 80 and all of these combined were hitting Ukrainian positions, gatherings of troops and command centers. So the areas by Dnipro, there's a gathering of troops. Sumy region, I'm not exactly sure what the target there would be. But as for Kiev, Lviv and so on, these are most likely either uh, transport of weapons and equipment or command centers throughout these areas as the Ukrainians were trying to uh, post and send more troops to the front line to then uh, launch their main thrust. So this missile strike is most likely connected to the Ukrainians starting their main thrust. So as soon as the Ukrainians start the main thrust, the Russians decided to hit all of the main targets of the Ukrainian military to try and prevent the Ukrainians from launching an effective thrust and destroying the Ukrainian army before it even reaches the front line. It is also important to state that the Ukrainians claim they have shut down 33 out of 36 missiles launched yesterday. So there is that perspective to also take into account. And it is impossible to verify which case would be true, as there is no evidence of the missiles actually hitting, because the Russians are unable to take video evidence of them hitting a city like Lviv. And the Ukrainians are banned to post pictures of missile strikes hitting. So they are not allowed to. It's illegal in Ukraine. They are going to be prosecuted uh, for doing so. So there's no way to confirm uh, whether these missiles hit or not, which is why the Ukrainians can claim whatever, whatever they want and there will be no fact checking. And that is going to be all for this update. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.